First one on my list here is Environmental SEM or ESEM. We don't actually have one of those here, but they are an interesting uh, SEM in that they were developed to allow CSIRO researchers to look at wet sheep's wool. They allow a pore vacuum into the chamber and they allow the electron beam to ionise those atoms in that pore vacuum to produce positive ions and electrons. The positive ions are attracted towards electrons building up in the sample surface and they can be used to dissipate charge. So we can operate at quite high pressures in the uh, environmental SEM and image samples that are insulating and, uh, and difficult uh, to image in a standard SEM. A cryo-SEM allows you to look at frozen samples, or cryogenically fixed samples. A cryo-SEM is really a standard SEM that it has a cryo-preparation unit and a cool stage, cold stage, cooled by liquid nitrogen gas inside uh, the SEM. So we can look at wet, we can look at volatile samples that are difficult to image basically in an ordinary SEM or a standard SEM that where high vacuum is, is required. Keeping them frozen keeps them stable, we can coat them, we can fracture them and we can image them and that is a unique, unique instrument. A focused iron beam or a fib, uh, we have one of these at CMM. Uh, this is where we use a gallium iron beam and other processes to erode samples away also can be and maybe in the future a cryogenic um, uh, addition to that. Variable pressure SEM is worth spending a little bit more time on. Variable pressure SEM uses the same types of uh, process as the environmental SE SEM but it doesn't go quite as far as the environmental SEM. What it allows us to do is to control the pressure in the chamber and to make use of those positive ions removing the charge from the sample and we can achieve the use of fairly high accelerating voltages on samples that are normally insulating and very, very difficult to image otherwise. Uh, this allows you to do microanalysis uh, using where it requires those high KVs. Low vacuum capable SEMs, benchtop SEMs, you may be familiar with those. They actually use the same sort of process uh, with reduced functionality uh, on a small portable SEM. If you are imaging and you are achieving nice images, that are interesting scientifically or aesthetically, you might want to consider putting a little bit of work into colorizing those or uh, cropping them or whatever and entering them into the CMM image of the month. Here's a number of, um, of images that I've uh, taken over the years and add, added a little bit of color to. The secret to this, uh, I think, is, is to add a nice snappy title. That top image on the left, for example, is uh, a broken uh, sphere from a sparkler that's been um, held on by a carbon tab and, and coated and imaged and uh, really it's, it's, it's a broken sample but um, if you have a look at it and aesthetically sort of decide it's quite appealing and call it something like um, Galactic Armageddon it's probably going to have a little more appeal. That's, uh, that's something that I would urge you to, uh, to be involved in. It looks great on the CV and really you should be able to achieve images of quality that, uh, that will appeal to, to everyone. Folks, that's it. Thank you very much. I know it's a, a long presentation. We don't normally do things this way, as I said at the very beginning, but uh, with all the resources that you have, the, the, um, the theory booklet, which should tie into this PowerPoint fairly closely, with my scope, which certainly ties in closely, uh, and with your machine instructions and the other resources that I've given you. If you engage with this, uh, with this topic, I think you'll be well and truly ready to, to start your practical component.